Hello, thank you for joining me in the class today. If you've never painted before, this is the perfect class for you. It's a superb little beginner painting, but it's going to be a really nice end result. A beautiful sunset with a nice uh, sunlit effect. So I'm quite looking forward to painting it myself. So let me show you what the picture looks like, and then we can plan it out from there. So I got this photograph on Pixabay. So I'm going to paint it on a 16 by 12 inch canvas, which is roughly 400 by 300 millimeters. So when doing a painting like this, um, you always start at the back and you work your way forward. So it's quite an interesting one like this because What's at the back and what's right in front is exactly the same color. So we're going to work a little bit different today. We'll paint the whole background and the foreground, and then we'll squeeze the boat in afterwards. So the first thing that we'll need to do is just uh, mix up the colors. It's pretty much a, a monotone kind of uh, painting, well not monotone, monochrome, eh? monochrome painting. So it's just variations of the same color. But we're not going to use only one color. So I think let's go over to the to the palette. Yeah, let's go to there. And let's see, the first mission is just matching that color there. So what I do is I always take a look and see what's the majority color in the mix. So I suspect the, it's quite a light pastel kind of color. So I suspect our majority color is white. <laughs> you were expecting me to say orange, eh? <laughs> It's quite light. But after that, definitely we're going to need some orange. So let's get some orange down there. So I'm using cadmium orange there and titanium white. So there is a bit of a grading from the top, which is more pinky, like a peachy kind of color. And then as we come down to the horizon, it, it does go a little bit more orangey. Or as though there's more like yellow in there, right? Eh? So I think to get that peachy kind of color, we maybe need to use just a little bit of some form of red. I wonder if I'm maybe putting down a little bit too little, because we do need to cover the whole canvas with these colors. Eh? So let me be a bit more generous. I can always put them back in the tube. And then as we get to that horizon, let's take some. I've got some cadmium lemon. Cadmium yellow, same thing. That'll do the trick. Cadmium lemon is just cadmium yellow with some white in it. And then later on for that boat, it's quite dark. I think we'll use some raw umber for that. So let's put some of that out there. Yeah, and I think that's probably all the colors we'd need for this guy. So before I start something like this, I'm always going to just do an experiment. Before I go and mix up big wads of, of paint, and then it's wrong. So let's take the, some orange, and let's add some white into it. Then I'll take this, and I'm going to hold it up against the screen essentially like that and i'm going to compare where is this where is this color that i'm mixing now and is it the same or does it need something so at, at this stage actually that looks like quite a nice color there for the for the horizon i'm going to just add some more white into it just to see what happens 
I find that when you're doing skies, you have to kind of make the colors more pastel than, than what you what you think they should be. Yeah, you know what? I think I don't think we're going to use that yellow after all. Maybe we will. There, but the sun has got a little bit of a, a yellowy outline around it. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's scoop some of that one side and let's start making a new pile. And let's get some red in there. Can you see I'm just adding the tiniest little, tiniest touch. Even that may be too much, but let's hope not. You can always add more paint to a color, but you can't take any out. So I always start adding a little bit too little because you also have your paints tend to be some are stronger than others. It's called chroma. So if the, if the chroma is stronger on the one, then then what you expect it is, then now you're going to throw it in there and it's going to be too... Um, you've gone too far. And now you have to add some of the old previous colors back in. And that often backfires in you and you end up with these ginormous big piles of paint that you can do nothing with. All right, so let's go there. I'm seeing this color that I've mixed here pretty much, pretty much in that top right-hand corner. In other words, closer to the sun, it's a little bit uh, lighter. And as you go further away from the sun, it goes a little bit darker. No surprise, is there? All right, so I think we're happy with those colors. We can, we can definitely work with them. If I had to, if I do really match that color perfectly in the top right, it's got a little bit of a bluey tinge to it. But I, I, I think we'll stick with these colors today, just to keep it nice and simple. All right, so now that we know what we've got and what we need to do, now we can mix up some more. So I'm going to put, yeah, what the heck, I'll do all that. So I'm going to mix this new batch next to that one. I'm going to leave that initial batch there. That way I can see whether I've got the same color or not, whether I'm still too light or whether I've got too, too much orange in there now. And then of course also, I always check it with, the, with my reference. On the screen well, only once i'm happy those two colors are the same then i'm gonna bring them together so while we add it let's mix in some painting medium for two reasons we want the painting medium to thin down the paint so that it can go onto the canvas a lot easier and then also to speed up the drying process So I'm going to add a fair amount of medium in here because we've got to ca cover quite a large area of the canvas and there isn't really much that we need to paint over it. So we can just go reasonably, reasonably creamy. I would almost say the consistency of mayonnaise is what I've got here at the moment. But we don't have to plaster the paint on. Okay, so there's, there's that guy. Next one, so that was orange and some red. So I'm keeping myself that little area over there clear. That's my original color that I'm double checking myself with. Let's get some more paint. We don't have to run it halfway through. But 
That would be a pain. Alrighty, check it with the reference, see if he's dark enough. I think he can still go a bit darker. Nice, we want a nice contrast between those guys there as well. Um, Susan is asking, what am I using to add the medium? This is just a, a dropper, which I got at the... Mine I ordered online. You can buy them at the hardware store, and you can also buy them from the pharmacy. You just go to the, to the chemist. You tell them you want a dropper. And it works great, because now I, what I do is I can... I can fill up the dropper full of medium like this and then I can take my bottle and I can close him up because paint oil paint dries on by oxidation so the same thing happens with your your painting medium as it comes into contact with air it starts to dry so by keeping your medium bottle lid closed you make it last a lot longer all righty so let's go over to the canvas so if you if you're a patron you can go and download the reference photo there's a pdf there with a reference photo and a, a sketch template and then there's also a, a tiled sketch template and a tiled reference photo from you for you to work from which look like that Then you'd want to just, luckily there's not too much to, to draw. So what you'd want to do is just uh, use some just standard carbon paper, the blue carbon paper, and, and just sketch out the, the outlines. What's really important when you're working with water is that you get your water level. It must be horizontal. So in, in this case, what I always do is let's... Let's just do that reference um, little photo in the corner for now. What I do is, wherever you decide your water level is going to be, just take something that you can make a mark with. So I've got a watercolor pencil that I usually use, and I'll just measure. So in this case, let's say I've got 13 centimeters, and I'll just measure just there, make myself a mark. And I'll measure the same distance on the other side. And then I always double check myself. 13. And 13. Yeah, that looks great. All right, so I've just got those two marks there now. Often you'll see I, I like to put some masking tape around the edges of my uh, painting. I'll make the marks on the, on the masking tape. That's why I'm not painting them closed by accident. So when it comes to um, getting in that waterline, I know it's going to be absolutely horizontal and perfect. All right, so to paint this, we want to paint it nice and nice broad strokes. So I'm going to use this nice big brush over here. So what's that? It's probably a, a one and a half inch brush. Maybe even a two-inch brush. Yeah, I think this is a, probably a two-inch brush. So that's about five centimeter width. Just a nice bristle brush. And now let's start off with the, say the darkest, the darkest color. I think I'll pop that back down there. There's only two colors on the palette, so I'm not going to bother putting him down in the corner. And I'm going to put it down in a nice scrubbing motion. Not tons of paint, though. Just a nice 
enough paint to get into the weave of the canvas, but there, there isn't a layer of paint. It's not thick. Just nice and thin. And now because we've got this lovely reflected effect, I'm going to do top and bottom at the same time. So what's interesting about the bottom piece, it's sort of, it's, it's rounding a bit more than the, than the top. Couldn't tell you why, it's probably just got something to do with the, the way the water, the light is reflecting off the water. Uh, so just keep using crisscrosses and stuff like that to make sure you get that, um, weave of the canvas nicely covered all right so we do now know that our sun is around this vicinity over here so what we need to do is things are lighter here and they go gradually darker to that side so i think i'm going to also just here bring that down as well so this is all just neat darkest color Like that. Slowly bring it down a little bit over here. Not too much. There, like that. And I just so that I know where that um, horizon line is. I'm going to take my roll of paper towel. Just rub off the excess of this color. And that way I can now go ahead and pick up some of the Just do that. Now I can go and pick up some of the lighter color. And because they're just variations of the same, I don't have to wash the brush. That saves me quite a bit of time there. All right, so we've got that line over there. What I'm going to do is just run my brush from that one mark that I've made through to the other. It doesn't need to be perfect at this stage, just so that I know where it is. Because now I'm going to take this and I'm going to start working him upwards. And downwards. Uh, we're going to have our sun somewhere around there, I suppose. So it seems to be in that vicinity, somewhere around there. You can leave that area open if you want to. It's not critical here today. I'm going to show you what to do if you haven't. And I'll just bring these two colors next to each other for now. I'm not going to mix them in yet. Let's do the same on the bottom. It's okay for you to lose that line of yours now. It just gave us that, all we needed that was to give us a place to start. We, where's our, our little water line that we need to start from? So I see here in this corner, there seems to be just a little bit of, little bit of the, the, some mountains and stuff peeping their head out. There also seems to be just a little bit of mist on that final horizon line. So that's cool. We'll work that in. Just adds a bit of extra interest to the picture. Okay, so there's really little paint. There's no excess paint on here to mix whatsoever. So I'm going to take, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this paint. And I'm going to take some of that paint. And I'll just bring them together here on the palette. And I'll mix myself an in-between color. Now you can pop that down over there. Pop that down over there. 
and now we can bring these all these colors together just using a circular scrubbing motion so i'll do the top one first so i'll take that intermediate color work it into the dark and then work the dark back down into the intermediate let's do the same on the bottom And that's where you get a nice little quick shading between those colors. Okay, let's go back to the paper towel and wipe off that excess. Because you've now got quite a bit of the dark left on there. We don't want that now because now we want to go from this intermediate color, which I'm going to pick a little bit more up. So I've got that on the brush. And I'm going to start from this where I put that down. And I'm in the same circular motion, work it into the into the lighter color. So you go into the light and back up into your intermediate. Same over here. And all you're trying to do is just get rid of any line that's that's formed between those guys. All right, now we can clean the the brush again just by wiping off that excess because you've basically got a shading there now it may not be perfectly smooth but that's okay you've got what's necessary so i'm going to just turf those guys and i'm going to take my brush and run it all the way across and this is going to do that final smoothing for you Usually in the water, I don't panic too much if it's not uh, perfectly smooth because you do now have ripples and things. But in the sky, I do like to have a nice even, a nice even color because the sky itself, unless there's unless there's obviously clouds, but if it's just sky itself, the sky is perfectly smooth. And there we go. So now we've got that that base that we can add the rest to. So you can wash that brush. Now I'm going to go over to a let's just take say a, a soft full bit. This one here may be a tiny touch too big. And let's take some of the lighter color. Maybe a bit big, but I'll try it. Now we're going to just put some of these little water ripples. So I just want to get the the reference up there just so you can see what i'm talking about just a suggestion of these water ripples you can see there's lots of detail in the in the photo because you've, you've got ripples plus smaller little ripples wind ripples blowing over the 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 wave ripples that sounds quite complicated we want to keep things simple this is a, a nice simple painting so i'm going to just take the, I've got some of the lighter color here and I'm going to just just drag some of them along here like this and just fade them slightly upwards So what you do want to do with this is don't make these guys exactly the same distance apart. Can you see this one's a little bit closer? And that one's a little bit further apart. Maybe there's just one more coming out of the picture in over here. Like 
like that. Now you can say take some of the darker color and pop some of it in between like that. Fade him upwards and downwards. And that just accentuates that that little wave. It's not really waves, it's just little ripples. So that's everything is gentle. This is the kind of painting you're going to hang in your room because it's nice, soft, soothing. I may even just take a little bit of that in that intermediate color that we mixed for here and there. Take some of that as we go further up. Just add some smaller little ones. Just to have some movement out into the closer to the horizon as well. Super light touch on your brush. Don't press hard. I'm just letting the weight of the brush drag itself over the canvas. Alrighty, I'm going to wash this brush. I think we're done with him now. Now we can get that horizon in there. So the easiest way of doing that is you can either take some masking tape, stick him down. In an ideal world, you would wait now for all this to dry before even doing that horizon work and stuff. But we're not going to. We want to paint everything in one go. So I'm just going to take a ruler and just lie them across there on the on the sky side. So my marks that I, I made initially, I could just see them through the paint are at the bottom of the bottom of the ruler. So he's a little bit darker than the rest. So we do need a new color for that. So I'm just setting up that for us. Let's go to there. So I'm going to take my darkest color. Let's take him. Put him over there. And let's get a bit of, just a, a, a little bit of raw umber into that. And let's see if we've chosen the right color. I'm hoping it's raw umber. Whenever you try to match a color, you always start with your, your best guess, and then you see what color is missing from that best guess. So I'm holding it up to the screen. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with the color. The raw umber is the, is the one. So now what I need to do is after you've got that color, I'm going to also just work on the tonal value. How dark is that color that I that I need to mix? This one seems pretty good, but I think I'm going to use my artist license and make it just a little bit darker. Then we can use this for the those little mountains that are on the right hand side and we can use it for the water ripples and all those guys as well. So I did use from there to there. So it's already got medium in it. So I'm okay with that. We don't need to add any new medium. Alrighty, so that's just back to the, let's go back to there. And you can take any, any flat brush, one like that, or a full bit, as long as it's got, when you turn it on its side like this, a nice sharp point. So I'll pick up now some of that paint. Because what you're looking for is a is a nice thin little 
line running along there. And as I run this across, I'm just running it against the ruler. And that way I can get myself a, a perfect line. So my line does look like he's running a little bit down. It's just because of the perspective from the from the camera. He is perfectly horizontal. We measured him. All right. So now you're never going to top, never going to touch the top of the line again. <laughs> you're never going to top the touch of the line. <laughs> you're never going to touch the top of the line. So I'll just pick up a little bit of the paint, not too much, and just very quickly fade him downwards. On this outside edge over here because what's happening is we've got our, our sunset itself is in this position over here so that um, little horizon line is darker here and it's going lighter and lighter also towards the towards there where the the sun, the, the sun is at its brightest. And the same thing over here. We need to have him thin over there and just gradually going a little bit broader. And that gives you that outward, going outward feeling. It's a nice, easy little separation there between the the water and the sky. So while we add it, let's use our yeah. No, I think I'm gonna let's clean this brush. Now we need to figure out where our, our boat and everything goes. It's it's time for him. I was gonna say let's put in this uh, water ripples because it's the same color, but we can't because we don't know where the boat is. <laughs> So let's get that. I think I'll let's go a little bit closer up. Uh, all right, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the photo. And let's just pop him down there. Right, so at the moment you've got all this lovely bright here in the in the reflection of the sail. The sail itself is lighter, and then obviously the sun as well. So what we'll need to do is get rid of some of the paint that's in those places so the easiest way of doing that is get yourself a nice clean piece of paper towel so i've torn off that previous stuff that had paint on it and i've got a nice clean one here fold it up so that you've got a nice sharp point you can even or if you can also do this but you get your finger inside so that you've got a, you can work with a sharp, a sharper point, as as what you can. And let's see. Let's put our sun say over there. So all you're doing now is you you're basically lifting out. Some of the paint that's there.
So every now and again I just got a clean clean piece of paper. And that should do the trick for over there. And then we've got our this main sail coming down there. And then the secondary sail is coming down somewhere there. And then we've got our reflection, which is just running down there. There, yeah, that should be good enough. Alrighty, let's take see if I can bring up the palette. And everything all in one go. Yeah, I think let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to take some white. Make sure it's clean white, no other colors. Let's get just a little bit of medium into that to help with the drawing process. This one here doesn't need to be as thin as before because we don't need to cover such a large area. I'm essentially putting it over neat neat canvas because we've wiped everything off. And let's just take a little bit of yellow. I'm going to take that and let's get some white into that. We don't want it too hectic. It must be basically off-white. One drop of medium in that, there's not much paint there. Make it two. Awesome. Now I think just a, a, a fine round brush would do would do the trick. Just something like this. We can paint that sky. Or the the, the um the sun, sorry. So the center of the sun, we want that to be nice and nice and bright. So I'm putting down neat white, and before I add more paint, I'm washing my brush. So Sharon's asking, what am I washing my brush with? I'm using just plain turpentine. So get yourself a nice rounding. Why are you washing the brush in between? Is because it is now there is still a little bit of paint at the bottom there. So you want this paint to lie on top of it, so that your sun is nice and nice and white, beautifully bright. Yeah, I estimate him probably around that size over there. Now it's got a bit of a, a bit of a yellowy ring around there, but we're not going to add that quite yet. Can you see there's a bit of a lens flare happening over there? I'm 
Let's go wide for a, for a short while. So to get that lens flare, I'm going to just take a, a soft full bit, pick up some white paint, tap most of it off on the palette. So I'm picking up the paint, and then next to it, next to that pile of paint, I'm just tapping the worst off, just to get rid of any excess. We can always add more paint. Can't take any away. And I'm just going to drag from inside here, upwards. Very gentle, no pressure on the brush. I'm just letting the paint do its own thing. Clean the brush because it's not obviously picked up pink. Don't want any pink on there. Now you're going to go through the same process again. Pick up paint, tap off the excess. Clean the brush. So you'll find when you get these lens flares, they tend to be the, the lines tend to be across each other. So if I put one at that angle there, I'm not going to follow that line and add another one going out that direction there like that. And look there, our sun is still beautifully clean. No pink inside him. Awesome. I think while we've got the white, let's get that little um, and and the and the full bit brush. Let's get that little bit of mistiness and stuff and the and the mountains on the right hand side. See there, you can see that quite nicely over there. So I'm just going to take some of the white and just run it along here, just above the horizon. So that there against the horizon is at his lightest. And then I'll fade him upwards. And outwards towards the, the center over there. So there's your there's your bit of a mistiness. We can wash the brush. And we're gonna do pretty much the same thing with the with this darker little horizon color. Just pick a little bit of it up, not much, just a tiny amount. Remember those mountains at the back are quite quite far away and they're hidden by the mist. So we don't need it to be too too prominent. And I'm just going to create myself a little bit of a, a little bit of skyline there. It's just a bit of a squiggle with a brush, and then you just f keep following it, gradually moving downwards, and that's giving you a shading. If he's not prominent enough, just give him another coat. Pick up some more of the brown, and just fade him gradually downwards. Seems to be another, but less prominent one further behind him. So I'm even using even less paint on the brush. Really, just the tiniest amount of paint. Make sure his silhouette is different to the guy in front of him. They don't want them to mirror each other; otherwise, it won't look natural. So use the photo as your guide. But obviously, we don't know this place. So I'm not trying to be perfect. Very gently blending that downwards. And away over there. Maybe that ends over there. Yeah, that's fine. So that's just added that extra little bit of 
bit of interest on that side, eh? On the otherwise there's nothing here. Cool, let's go back. So um, if you're working along in acrylic, then the medium, the painting medium you would use would just be plain old H2O water. All right, so let's go and pick up a little bit of that, that yellow that, that we mixed. So that was just yellow and white. And I'm going to carefully put it on the outside of this little circle over here. Don't go to the inside of the, the sun because you'd never get it white again. So just a little circle. That's it. You can leave it in that. Clean your brush. And then here on, on these little flares, just tap. If there's any line over there, just gently tap them away so that they blend outwards. Whatever you do, don't go into the white because you never get it white again without having to start all over again. Cool. I'm going to wash the brush. Dry it off well on, my, on a cloth. And then here on the outside, I'm going to just tap over there. Just soften that edge there. Any hard edges on the outside, just soften them out. Just by Gently tapping over it, the lightest little touch, and that's your sun sorted. Right, so for the for the boat, if you've now just sketched out your um, using the template, you you a for away. gonna just gonna take my my reference that I've printed out and pop him over there next to it then I can work from that so with this boat you've got light shining through the through the sail so what we'd want to do is just give ourselves an idea of the shape of those sails and from there we can we can get the rest because we need to put them in first before we can do all the dark lines and stuff because it'd be too much too difficult to squeeze the light in between those dark lines so what i'm going to do is i think i'll just use some of the let's take some of the the lightest pink that we got and let's add some more white into it sort of like you see on just to get that kind of a color over there Right, and now we're just going to start sketching that out. The bottom of the sail is just below the horizon. That guy there has got a bit of a bow. And 
And in the front of the sail, by the mast, is not 100% upright. He seems to be at a bit of an angle. Something like that. And then we've got the other sail next to him. Yeah, and he comes down further than the other one. He's still there. So I'm just sketching out a few little lines that's just, even if it's just enough for me to see, then don't need to be perfect. Okay, I'll wash the brush and I'll use some of that horizon color and give myself an idea of the the boat itself. He goes there past the end of the He joins up at the end of that sail over there, comes pretty much straight down, out along there. This one goes past the sail and comes in with a bit of a, a curl like that. And then we've got this one dude over there and so on. And then we've got our reflections coming up over there. And that's fine. That's all we need for now. So wash the brush. And now let's start getting that nice, beautiful effect of the sun inside the sail. So I'm going to go all the way back to white. So there's that little darker bit. But underneath it is white. So I'm going to put white down. And then there's yellow. So I'm picking up yellow. Putting that down. Let's fade that out. So stay inside your lines. It doesn't have to be perfect, nice, neat over there. All this will tie together when we add the, the dark lines in at the end of the day. Right, so this is now just gradually fading into that pink. So I'm just taking the yellow and fading it into that lighter pink that we were sketching with. And as we go down, it's gradually becoming darker. But I'm making sure it doesn't go too dark. So it's just a basic little, essentially just a little bit of a shading. I'll bring that yellow down a bit further. White. Alrighty, so that over there is a darker. So let's take some of the darkest sky color. Maybe I can pop the Maybe I'll pop the palette just small down over there. So I'm just take some of the darkest color. Darkest sky color. Let's block it in with that. And then let's go to the 
What do you call that little sail at the front? Is that the jib or what? Let's block him in with a, that initial color that we were sketching with. It seems to be one, one solid color. So I'll block him in nice and even. Right, so this sail overlaps that one. So can you see that it's made that little area there a little bit darker? And then here you've got little little goodies also just that are darker so I'm going to take some of my darkest color and you see I'm just using I'm just picking up a little bit of this I don't need much of it so I'm just going to do that pick up a little bit of red just do a little impromptu mix here maybe a bit more orange into it as well very quick little color match you, because we don't need much of it just that little tiny amount on the palette is good enough all righty so let's see we've got a line of that running down from there and then down there. Yeah, just like that. there's a mark and there's a mark so i'm just estimating these things they don't need to be perfect yeah that should do the trick Alright, so now to get those outlines and stuff of the boat, let's take some raw umber. And I'm just going to take a little bit of orange, a little bit of red into that, just to give it that orangey, ready look. And that'll warm up that brown color of us. So if you've done this and, and you do want it darker, then you can always add a little bit of ultramarine into it as well. Okay, so let's just get one or two drops in there. This here you can make reasonably thin because it now needs to lie on top of the other stuff and you also need to paint in lines. Thin lines and the minute you work with thin lines like with a rigger brush or whatever that tells you you need to have your paint thin like an ink. Okay so I'll stick with a fine liner. roll my paint in there to get it well loaded we want lots of paint on there and i'm going to get that main mast in so if you want to you can also use the whole ruler trick again to lay your ruler down there 
and get yourself a nice straight line. I'm going to be brave. I'm just going to es estimate him in. So the way I do it is I hold my hand like this and I move my fingers. So look what I d what happens when I when I do that. Can you see how straight line that brush is making? So I'm just pulling in my hands like that. Or just curling in my fingers. Feather light touch on the brush. If the paint is not coming off the, the brush, that means you haven't got your paint thin enough. Add a bit more medium into it. Alrighty, so this mast is now going to come all the way down and meet with the with the boat like that. And now we can do all this other little outlining and stuff that's around the around the boat. Let's see if I can get in a closer view there for you like that. When you need to do a really nice thin line, then what you do is this. When you're picking up the paint, pick up the paint like this, and then turn your brush 180 degrees, and then pick it up again. And now look what happens when I turn it. Look at that beautiful thin chisel point. So that allows you to draw or paint little skinny lines like that. So here's quite a bit of fine detail work. As always, I just try and get it more or less. It doesn't have to be perfect, just more or less. As long as you've got that basic effect in place, it will look correct. So I don't know about you, but I always hold my breath when I'm doing work like this. Yeah, that's cool. So there are a few little smaller marks and things. So I'm going to just wipe off the excess paint that's on the brush. And then you should be able to put in these lighter marks because there's less paint on the brush. So there's less paint that can go off the brush. Thank <laughs> you. 
and that then automatically gives you that that lighter line So normally I would tell you to thin your paint down even more so that you can get nice longer lines using a, um, a rigger brush. But because the, the raw umber is a, a transparent color, you, you can't really do that here. So you won't get a nice a nice line. Alrighty, let's put the boat in. So I'll just stick with the same color for now. I'm going to hold the brush flatter though. Instead of using the tip, I'm using the side of the brush so that I can fill in a nice flat color onto the boat. Alrighty, so that sail comes down there, there, and ends up over there. So I'm also again seeing one or two little lines and stuff coming out of it, so I'll just suggest them. Same for here, here's a few little things. Make sure none of your lines overlap the, or meet up with the horizon. There are some really basic lines and things here. Just to show you the shape of the the sail and so on. Alright, so there we have one figure standing there. Looks like almost like he's looking upwards, eh? So I'm not going to try and paint absolutely perfectly. I'll do that and then put a little small head on the top and that's enough. The next guy is leaned f leaning forward like this. So I'm going to just get that basic shape. Is all I'm interested in. If you can just indicate that basic shape, you're A for away. There's a thin little, some rope hang going down there. So I'm just going to suggest that it doesn't have to be solid. There's something over there. All right. Now I'm going to take just some neat raw umber. Because he's now darker than 
this color that I'm working with. So just need to um, work some medium into it so that it can flow off the brush. Maybe even just wash the brush so that you can start with neat raw umber. And I'm just going to suggest a few little details inside the boat just so that he's also not not plain and there's nothing to it. And in particular, I want to darken up this little bottom edge over there, right there where he curls under and he meets the water. So that's just adding some details in there for us. There's a little round thingy there, and there's a little round thingy there. We'll paint them in for the guys that do sail and know what all these things are for. And then there's something at the top of uh, there doing that. That's good enough. And I'm also seeing just a little lighter thingamajig over there. Maybe it's like a window. Awesome, let's go to a wider view. And then start getting that, uh, the reflection in. There we go. All right, so for the reflection, I'm going to use a flat brush. Just something like that. Because you can see what happens is, as you've got those little ripples on the water, it forms like little lines. So with a flat brush, you're about to just essentially tap all of this in. So I'll start off with, let's take some of that horizon color. And I'm going to just tap in that little motion line of the boat, the wake. So he makes two like this, gradually going broader and broader apart. So just tap, 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 tap. Seeing one or two little light. It sparkles you on the water over there. And over here, so I'm just using some neat white, just just touching a few of those little marks in there. All right, so now we're going to go all the way back to raw umber, just neat raw umber. And all my taps that I do are going to be horizontal. So it's just going to be tap, 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 tap. Mm. 
may be let me adjust the other camera and I can show a closer view of this Let's go there. That's going to give you a better a better view of the technique. So just keep tapping. So obviously here, right up against the boat. You want this to be nice and dark because the boat is casting a shadow. So by making this here nice and dark, it sort of settles the boat onto the water. And from here, we're going to just gradually start increasing the gaps in between. So that you see more of the, the water shining through. Okay, let's clean the brush and let's go over to say the yellow. So that yellow is this um, sail over here, those bits that are reflecting. So I'm just here across by the by that sail, going straight down and just tapping so that you've got little gaps in between the these these yellow taps of yours and that shows you that there's little ripples in the water going up and down up and down up and down like this so what happens is as these guys come down they gradually break up and become less and less and you've got bigger gaps in between so that's what i do i break up those gaps okay let's take a look Let's add just a little bit of it on this sail over here as well. So I'm just going to use the corner of the brush. I'm not using the whole the whole width of the brush. I'm just using the corner. As I come down, bigger and bigger gaps. There's a few over there. All right, let's take a little bit of our sky color, the, the, the lightest one that we have there by the horizon. And I'm going to work it into that yellow just to have a an intermediate color there. We can maybe even add just a dash of orange extra into that. No, I think we can add lots more contrast to that. Let's use our darkest color. This this one that we that we added into the sail over there. Let's use that guy. Tap these guys in. So the same thing as before. Close to the boat. Your taps close together. As you move away from the boat, get them further and further apart. So I'm going to stop over there. And we've got some distinct guys going along here. So it's all just tap, tap, tap. Some distinct guys going over here. I'm just using the corner of the brush.
as I go down, gradually further and further apart. I think that's as good as we're going to get with a big brush. Now we need to go back over to a small brush. So we use that same fine liner that we used for the for this, the, the sails. Let's get some of the that brown that we used for edging the sails. Let's start adding some of those little reflections in. So as I do this, I'm just wiggling and squiggling and tap, tap, tap. As I move down, larger gaps. Here we've got this dude, these reflection is over there. Other guy, his reflection, so his legs were apart there, and then it came together to his body. Here's your mast, so coming straight down, there's the mast. Wiggles and squiggles, gradually further apart. Here's that sail over there, just a little bit of reflections on him. Alright, then going further down, there's this beautiful white that's reflecting out of the top of the top of the sail. So let's start getting some of that in. So it's back to the big brush again. And as you do this, you want to add lots of paint. Pick up paint often. As I come down to here, gradually just individual little sparkles that are left. That's all you've got. Do the same with the yellow, just with a smaller brush. Because that cell there goes narrower and narrower. So I'm going to add just less sparkles, narrower and narrower, as I go down over here, until eventually it stops. Alrighty, let's stand back and see what we've got. And there we go. I think that's what's missing now is I'm going to take my raw umber, get a drop of paint into it. And I'll just add my little birds in the sky. So just go tweet tweet. Tweet tweet, a little bit bigger, a little bit of a different angle. Let's maybe make the top one even bigger. There you go. We've got our our sailors are going home, and so are the birds. After a good day's fishing. So if you enjoyed this lesson, um, head over to my website. You can uh, find tons more lessons like this. And that'll give you access to not just the uh, edited version of this class and the handouts for it, but also all the other classes, their handouts and the um, edited versions of that. There's hundreds of classes there in all sorts of different mediums, oil, acrylic, watercolor, plenty for you to, to give it a try. 
So the my website address is on the screen over there below. Go and take a look. And that also obviously now it allows me to continue giving these classes over here for free. So I hope you enjoyed that class. Good luck with your boat. I'll see you next time.